Hello, thank you for joining me. See, in this film I like to put in the floor that would represent both the foundation and the slab as we talked about before in regard to our basement. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that we have, now that we have our basement walls in place and where we like to put them, let's go ahead and put in that floor and it should, uh, should come out just fine. So, let's do this. What we have down here is our level. Let's go ahead and uh, change our scale so we can see some of the annotations associated with this view. We have a second floor, first floor in our basement. Our first floor uh, walls uh, should go beyond actually the second floor to our roof when we get that uh, done, but we're going to do that later. And we have our wall in the background. You can see our concrete wall in the background, but what we don't have is a floor down here. And that floor with this simple model is going to represent both the stem wall and the slab. So let's do this. Let's go to our basement. Uh, let's adjust our scale. Go back up to one eighth of an inch is equal to a foot. So we can see what we're doing here. And what we're going to be doing, if you think about a, uh, a footing, a footing typically is about. Uh, you know, for a residential structure can be about 24 inches wide. So if you think about the footing, we have an 8-inch wall and a 24-inch wide uh, footing that goes underneath that. So you take that 24 inches minus the 8 inches for the wall, that leaves us 16 inches to divide by 2 on both sides. So it's kind of like a sandwich in a way. You have 8 inches on one side for part of the footing. That uh, increases the footprint of the weight of the house over a much larger area on the ground. You have 8 inches for the wall itself, another 8 inches for the footing on the inside. We're only going to consider that 8 inches on the, on the left side of the wall as we're looking at it over here, or on the top. And we're just going to consider that and everything else is going to be a continuous floor on the inside. So, let's do this. Home tab, floor. Then we'll do a cast in place concrete floor, so if we haven't created that yet, um, which it doesn't look like we have. Let's go ahead and create one. It's actually pretty easy. We use our generic 12 inch floor. Go to edit type. And you can always borrow this floor from another uh, model that you've already done. And we're going to duplicate it and call this concrete slab. And uh, call that 8 inches. And go to OK. Edit. Change our uh, st uh, structural component, which is going to be concrete, cast in place concrete. Go to OK. And uh, the width, the height, the thickness, 8 inches. And then go to OK. So now we have a concrete slab, 8 inches, and we're going to draw that slab out. So what we're going to be using is uh, we're going to be using this exterior line as a reference. And instead of doing this in two or three steps, we're going to do this in one step by going up here to our options bar and typing in eight inches. And we do want to extend into the wall course. What we want to do, you can see the preview of that. You can see our polar tracking. You can see that line, that dash line is going to represent an eight inch offset from this wall here that we're going to select. So select that wall. It's kind of like doing our roof in a way. Select that edge of that wall, this edge of that wall and then this edge and check mark. So now we have a concrete floor. Let's go ahead and take a look at it and see what that looks like in a section. So now we do have our floor down here. It extends out by 8 inches from the wall and then it's continuous on the inside. So that's all we have to do here really. In the next film we're going to put in the first floor and we're going to take a look at that and kind of discuss some of the options associated with ways of correcting that. And That's a part of a chapter number 4 in our book when it talks about parts, and we'll get into that in more detail later. Thank you.